I've got a call coming in, and I'm just going to answer it. Hello? Hello? Hello, Chris? Hello? Hello? Chris? Oh, there you are. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Pretty good. I kept going, Chris, Chris, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Hey, Coach, we're actually doing our 24-hour live stream right now. Do you mind just doing an impromptu talk, like, on, like right. live right okay. now? Yeah, uh, about 15 minutes because I'm ready to go to the shopping with my wife here. Oh, okay, let's do it. All right. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> my, my co-host will be back in a minute. He he, he just kind of left, but this is great. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Wayne Fonts on the phone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is so great. We talked to Herman Moore about okay. an hour ago, and we were reminiscing. Oh, my gosh. Wayne, it's so great to talk to you. My pleasure, man. Um, let's talk. I mean. I, I got so here's how crazy the world is. I have a friend who moved into the house three doors down from you. <laughs> uh-huh. um, let's talk about the Lions um, right now and your thoughts. Are on, we on the air? Yeah, yeah, we're going, man. We're here. <laughs> we're live on the air. My God, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. He's back. <laughs> I'm not messing around. <laughs> oh God. Uh, you know we love you, Coach. You know we do. Well, I, I appreciate it, and you guys all know uh, I love the Lions, and uh, I've always did, and I always will. And I'll tell you this. The Lions right now, I'm probably stepping on some of your questions, but the Lions right now are playing as good as anybody in the National Football League. Uh, uh, this football team, uh, I, I really believe they believe in this coach. Uh, they're playing extremely hard. I, I watch them every Sunday. Uh, on TV, and, and you can see the, the great effort uh, that this team is putting forth to uh, to win and trying to get over this hump of being a team that always loses in the end. Uh, I am proud of the Lions, man. <laughs> uh, you know what? If the season started right now, I'd take them to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> How about that? Whoa. You know, I, I, I don't <clears throat> That's a bold statement, right? But the way they're playing, I would I would absolutely say that they could they have an absolute shot at it. They could make that run in the playoffs. This is a this is a team like we haven't seen since you coached the team. And this is one of the things like the folks in the chat are talking about right now. For they're saying for the young kids, Wayne Fonts is the the Dan Campbell before Dan Campbell. <laughs> well, that's that's you know, and I take that as a tremendous compliment. I, well, because I like this guy. I I really like what this guy's doing and. Uh, I like the way the players are responding, and, and the fans. I mean, the fans are going crazy, and it's 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 something that they really need in Detroit. And I think the Lions are ready just to break out. And in fact, they're playing Minnesota this week. And uh, if I were a betting man, which I am not, LOL, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would bet the Lions this week. I'm getting ready to put my house up <laughs> for. On mortgage to bet this game. Nah. I'm not a better. Yes. Well, because we're in Florida, right? In Florida, we're not allowed to. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's that's it. And I, I guess the spread's two and a half, um, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is this is an incredible team, um, and and the way they've come together after this the slow start this year, and you're right, the players have not given up on the coach. The coach has not given up on the players, <laughs> and I feel like, and as, as as a guy who's been there, right? And we we talked to Bill Keenest earlier. I'm, I'm sure you remember Bill. He he never disappeared from the side. <laughs> um, I sit there and think about the the um, the way this team is put together, and then I look to the GM and the work that he's doing, and the players that he's been able to pull into this to this uh, locker room. The the connection between Dan Campbell and and uh, Mr. Holmes just seems to be like a, a direct line between each other, like of the same mind, and and this kind of thing. Did you was there a point when you felt like you had that kind of a closeness? with the GM at the Lions, or was there always kind of a little push and a pull going on? You know what? I never had a problem with any GM. Uh, uh, I started out with Russ Thomas, and a lot of people thought Russ was a little different, but I thought Russ was a great football man, and he wanted uh, more than anything to have a great football team in Detroit. Then Chuck Smith took over, and uh, he had the same philosophies that, that Russ had. Uh, and the only thing when we had a great scouting department, that's why we were we were almost in every game we played. Uh, 
Uh, the Dallas game, I'll never forget that game. Uh, it was one of the great games that I've ever been associated with. But I'll tell you the big thing is that uh, the coach, uh, whatever, the, they believe in his what he's putting out. Uh, yeah. whatever, he's, whatever he's putting, they're buying. And uh, they're hanging in there, and I think that's a plus. I think, and also, again, I'm probably rattling, which I always did. And I love uh, it. I the, love it when with, you do. <laughs> with, with, with a cigar, you know, I used to just rattle. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, this, uh, this coach, like I said, I keep talking about the coach. And the trade you guys made, the trade that the Lions made, and I, I love Matthew Stafford, and the trade he went to the Rams and we got Goff. I would have loved to have Goff. Goff, Goff to me is as good as anybody out there. And, and you can't – I always said this. You could win with – you could lose with one, but you can't win without one, and that's the quarterback. And uh, I think the Lions have the quarterback maybe to win it all. I, I don't disagree, and that's a and that may be a bold statement, yeah. but that's how much I that's how much I like this quarterback. That, and that's that's kind of that's where I am, Coach. I feel like it, 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 look, they're going to do uh, their their season is where their season is. They may squeak into the playoffs, and if they do, it's anybody's game at that point. But if yeah, I, absolutely, if I think past and say, okay, maybe they didn't make it. Okay, darn it. But they, but everything else looks right. A couple pieces on defense. And I feel like the team is is set up to to be that playoff winner to take you all the way. I I, I mean, there's it, the other pieces. I feel are a little bit more luxurious, but our offense we're scoring thirty five points a game, right? If we can, can you, get, you know what? <laughs> Go ahead. Un, unreal. I mean, we're scoring thirty eight points and thirty five, and maybe lose it early. But you're right. Our defense. Is starting to play better. Yeah. They're starting to play better as a team. There's not a, a whole lot of great individuals, but it's a great team defense. And I had that when I was in Detroit. We had a we had a bunch of guys, but they were some great ones, some average ones, but they all played together and they all played great together. And you had the, like Chris Spillman. I mean, he was a, uh, he wouldn't take anything less than winning, yep. and, and that and that's big. And the we had Jerry. We had. I just can go on and on about the defense we had in Detroit, and our offense, of course. Uh, what can I say about Barry and Lomas and Kevin Glover and Herman Moore and all those guys? So we had a great team. Excuse me. Excuse me. I want to say this correct. We had a very good team. With golf, we might have won two or three Super Bowls. Wow. And, and I, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. One of the things I see with Dan Campbell that's so similar to you is that connection with the players. You genuinely loved those men in that locker room. And it was it was palpable to to folks watching from the outside. Even me as as, as a uh, a man in my 20s in those years, I, I I could watch and I'd say that this is I I mean, I would go to the wall, I would go through the wall for coach Fonts. Can you talk a little bit about those relationships you had with those those folks? You, you know what? Excuse me. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and they, you know, I really believe that they would stand in front of a train for me, but they also knew this, Chris, I would have done the same for them. And, and, th and that was the, that was the deal. They believed in me and I also believed in them. I always treated those guys like men and I respected them and they respected me. And I think that's what made us play well together. And, and without that, it, you know, you got a bunch of individuals. The key is to get the individuals to play together. Yeah. And right now our guys are starting to do that. And, and uh, like you said, to begin the playoffs, uh, you know, there's, there's no chance what could happen. Yep. I always said, let's get the playoffs, get in, crawl in, sneak in, but let's get in and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, in in the most recent memory, uh, the obvious one is the New York Giants kind of fell backwards into the playoffs at nine and seven and won a Super Bowl. It, it, yes, it, they did. It, it, and my brother coached on that staff, by the way. Did he? Yeah, I had a brother that coached on the with the Giants then. No way. Oh, coach, coach, are you still are you still a stogie guy? You still like your your cigars? Excuse me. Do you still like your cigars? Me, hold on, hold on. Yeah. My uh, my my other phone's ringing. I hope that doesn't bother. But go ahead again. No, no. Are you still? Do you still love your cigars? 
Oh, absolutely. Can, can, Just keep sending them. I'll keep smoking. <laughs> can because and I'm not giving it away because I, we, we we like our privacy, both of us. Um, but I'm just a couple miles from you. I would love sometime before Christmas, and I'll call you like in the next couple of days. I would love to treat you to a cigar, sit down, and just let you rattle all you want because I love hearing your stories. You you're you're what my absolute. I mean, I came of age as a Lions fan to you and I and your your teams, and I watched you and your leadership, and you've you had an impact on me just from the outside looking in as, as how I've grown and how I've become as a leader in the in the job that I've taken. I would love just to sit down and spend some time with you if you're if you're down for that. Just let's do it, Chris. Just let me know. I'm available. Uh, at, I'm available at all times. I hide a lot. I, I keep hiding, but people keep <laughs> finding me, Chris. I can't understand it. Maybe you know, was in you know, giving my phone number, uh, Dean Herman. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I one story. I, I sometimes I just I'm out at the sports bar. By the way, when I go to the sports bar to watch the Lions play every Sunday. Mm -hmm. I used to sit, and they have TVs of every game going on, and I would sit beside the TV that had the uh, Lions on, and I'd be I'd be the only one sitting there. Maybe one or another guy would be sitting in that corner watching the Lions, and I would have my Lions paraphernalia on, of a hat, of a shirt, or whatever they have on. Then all of a sudden, we started to win. We started to win, and all of a sudden. I look around, and I get 10, 12, 15, 20 people sitting with me watching this game now. <laughs> and, they are, and they're all Lions fans. They were hiding. But now they're out in the open, and I love it. <laughs> I just love it. But, uh, and, and you know what? And the great thing is this. If something goes awry, something goes wrong, they look at me and they go, Coach, what happened? And I say, you know what? I got fired. I have no idea. <laughs> he said, they fired me for my opinion. So let me go and enjoy this game. <laughs> you know, you, we're on the right track. And uh, Sheila, uh, I call I call the Lions. I talk to Chris Spielman. Uh hang in there and uh, only you hang in there uh, the things are starting to come together and Chris you know this like I said again and the fans are uh, I think the fans are starting to believe it also of the way they're cheering and screaming this team if they get in the playoffs we have a chance yeah. and we're going to beat Minnesota Sunday oh gosh oh, coach I love I love to hear that I have to say really quick we have tickets. We're doing an auction. This is all for St. Jude. We're raising money for St. Jude. We've gotten to just over $16,000 so far today. Um, we're shooting Beautiful. to get to thirty five. That'll take us over $100,000 total. But we have an auction going oh, on. Auction.DetroitLionsPodcast.com. There are club-level seats and parking for anyone who wants them for Minnesota's game, this game against Minnesota. But you have to be loud. If you're going to go there, you have to be loud. Coach just told you it's the, it's the sound of the fans. And, Coach, I mean – well, well, the Lions are the only team to be penalized for the crowd being too loud. I remember that in the, back in the Silver oh, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, how much oh, of an yeah. effect does that that crowd noise have on on the coaching and the players? You know, uh, I keep going back to that Dallas win, and uh, I, I always said, and in, in, in the people that uh, I know well that that the crowd noise yeah. in that game had to jack up the players. I mean, it had to. It was deafening. Uh, I mean, we just, I mean, if we fumbled, the, the crowd cheered. I mean, it was one of those things where it was one of those afternoons that uh, the crowd jumped up and said, you know what, I'm proud to be a Detroit Lion. So it, it does help. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Do you, do you think the players find a little bit of extra juice there? I think so. And, you know, I really do. People say, you know, I, did, I didn't hear the noise. Uh, you know, but you can't help but hear. It. You can't help but hear it, and I think it it kind of turns things a little bit. I think you 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 dial it up from an eight to a nine. I mean, it helps you go maybe one more point, whatever it is. It helps. It helps the team. So just tell them to keep doing it. Yep, yep. Um, Coach, one of the things. Um, Coach Campbell talks about, he made a statement about the ending of the Vikings game burning him. He, he made a decision that uh, he knows wasn't the right decision, and it's just eating away at him. But it's, and he felt like he let the players down. Um, but it doesn't seem to keep them down. As, as a coach, 
when you make a decision, you're like, ah, I let my guys down. How do you, I mean, and, and if, I mean, and they don't seem to be, you know, burnt by that. How do you, how do you, how do you come back from that? What do you, how do you take that? Do you, do you put it in, the, in like a cornerback who got burnt on a play? You put that in the back pocket and kind of forget about it and work on it later? Or, well, how do you, how do you approach that? Listen, I, I told the players when I first got the job, I said, never will you hear on the radio or in the newspaper that Wayne Fonts said, uh, uh, Chris Spielman, uh, he was the one that missed the tackle. He was the one that cost us the game, which that never happened. But the players, I, I think they're going to believe when, when, it, when, a coach, when a coach makes a decision and the team maybe loses because of that decision, I think Campbell, Campbell puts it on his shoulder. He said it was me. And I think the team loves it and they respect it. And, and that was my deal. If, if things didn't go right and, and somebody just dropped the ball, I would say, you know what? That, that didn't cause us to win or lose. That was one play in the game. And maybe I could have done something better, guys. And, and I think the players respected me for that. And I think that uh, the coach has that respect from the players. So whatever he does now, they're going to jump aboard. I've got people. And I'm rattling. Of course. Mm-hmm. I'm just rattling, but I, I really believe that. I've got someone in the chat. They're saying Wayne doesn't know how to respond to coaching errors because he never made any. <laughs> what what they say? The coach Wayne doesn't know how to respond to coaching errors because he's never made any. <laughs> That's the love. <laughs> That's the love you get. <laughs> Probably one of my guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, Coach, we, we absolutely love you. We appreciate everything you've done for the Lions. We appreciate how great you've been to, to the show, and I don't want to take a bunch of your time. I will take it later with that cigar. I, I'm going to call you in a couple of days, and we'll get that set up. But I, I just want to thank you, you from fans all over. You're, you are absolutely the best. We love everything about you, the, the way you led this team. And we no one forgets. Everyone throws back that last and only Super Bowl era playoff win was at the helm with with coach Wayne Fonts at the helm and there is a heck of a lot to say. I think people are 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 happy and ready for Dan Campbell to be the next guy to do it, but your name is is written in stone across Detroit. People just absolutely love you. I think I appreciate that and uh, uh you just you just tell the guy the fans to keep on rooting cuz uh, uh this team, I keep I just this team uh, it's, it's getting better every week, Coach. Uh, uh, I, I, it's a feeling that you have, you know, that if this team doesn't make it this year, if they stumble, Chris, go on the right track. Yeah. And, and you know, see, you see teams that, that, uh, that play well in the end of the season, and you say, well, this team is ready to take off. And the next season starts, and they don't. The key here, I believe, is to keep those players together and keep them believing in uh, – this team has a chance. I really, I really believe that, or I wouldn't say it. Now that they're all said and done, and I'm giving you 15, 20 minutes of my time, I'm going to light a cigar and jump in my jacuzzi. It's 84 degrees, and I'm going to light up and smoke and watch golfers go by. <laughs> oh, Coach, I love you. Thank you so much for, for giving us a call and joining us, and I hope you enjoy that soak. You deserve it. Okay, listen, if you see any of my, my – Old players now, they're getting old. If you say those guys, tell them that Wayne Fonts said hello. I will. I will do. Tell them all I said hello, man. I, I will. All right, you take care. You too, Coach. Thank you. Go go, Lions. All right. Love you, brother. Hey, Coach. Coach, man. That's great. Oh, he, what timing he has, too. He That's... just called. He just called. Just decided to call. that, that was completely unplanned. Why? Phone's back on. I, I'm like, is that is that Coach?